Twenty Infinity. You tune in to Twenty Infinity Live, ninety six seven to beat the Ace of Pop and R B. I am Moran, the man. It's a lot going on, but I'm currently in the presence of the amazing, talented Carrie Foe. How you doing? I'm good. I'm a little bit sick, but I'm mm. here, and that's all that matters. You are absolutely right. Mm-hmm. You are absolutely right. So um, let's really, really start with you, because I've been hip to you for a very long time. You hail from Arkansas, and I want to say I really came accustomed to you in 2015, and it's now 2019. So how do you feel about everything that you provided for hip-hop up until this point? Um, I feel really good. Mm-hmm. I feel really good. Um, I just, I don't know, like... I just make shit and I hope people fuck with it. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, a lot of people are always like, oh, you're slept on. But I'm like, no, nah, I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do. Mm. And niggas will catch up whenever they're supposed to catch up. That's real. So, yeah. That's real. I just, I mean, I make art for myself and people that can identify. So, mm-hmm. absolutely. So, what a time for it to be a woman in hip hop because I feel like a lot of women are really putting on for the culture right now. And you are definitely one of them. How does it feel for you to have a position in hip hop? Um, it feels good. I mean, I don't know. Like, it's just crazy because, like you said, I've been doing this for a minute, and to like still be um, one of the names that's like always in the conversation for mm-hmm. this long, you know, like it's a blessing, mm-hmm. and I'm just glad to be like in the conversation at all. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, so you don't, you don't, you're just happy to be here for the most part. Yeah, I mean. The thing is, is like, I'm going to make art regardless. I'm going to make music regardless. And the fact that I'm in the conversation amongst the people that people that think that are the best of whatever, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Whether male or female music in general, the fact that I'm in the conversation is the most special part to me. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So I'm going to do this regardless, you know? Mm-hmm. Like. Could be sitting this outside, homeless, going to be rapping on the corner no matter period. what. Absolutely. <laughs> and I feel like that's real because you don't really hear a lot of people saying that. You hear some people that'll. You know, you have some people that come in for the money, which is cool. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah. when you have some people who are honest about where they are in their craft and are yeah. willing to say, like, yo, even if I have one fan, I'm going to perform regardless. That's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, because, I mean, well, for me, I've tried to veer off the path of music, like, tried to do something else. And somehow I just keep getting put back on this path. Mm. So it's just like, I feel like this is my purpose. Mm. What are some of those uh, veers that you went through? Like, what's some other things that happened? Um, I, like, so I started making music when I was, like, 15, 16. Mm-hmm. I stopped making music when I went to college. Well, first I was like, I'm going to go to hair school. <laughs> that didn't work because I don't even like doing hair. Mm. I don't even like doing my hair. Can't ask you to do my dress, huh? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can't even cornrow. <laughs> like, so I don't even yeah. You can't even do braids? No, I but can't. But you're black. You're supposed to like go. I know, and that's a stereotype. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's weird. But, um, and then uh, I went to art school at Sandy Springs uh, Art Institute. Mm. Um and I went for audio engineering, but I stopped making music because wow. I was like, I knew I wanted to do something in music. I was like, I don't know if making music is going to work because I'm from Arkansas. And nobody cares what I got to say. Mm. And then I ended up dropping out, moving back to Arkansas and literally made a song. And everybody in my hometown loved it. And I was just like, fuck it. Let's just keep going. Dope. And I haven't stopped since then. How did you wind up in Atlanta? Um, well, I wanted to get out of Little Rock. I had, I've lived, I lived in Little Rock my whole life up until 18 Mm. and I was just like, I want to get out of here. And Mm. so I enrolled myself into the art Institute just to get out and I ended up loving Atlanta. Mm. Like I made a lot of friends here. So like, where were you staying? Like, cause I was Sandy Springs. So they had like dorm rooms at the, they had, they had apartments (laughs) that was like, I that, guess in yeah. cahoots with the school and yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. student housing, but it was really just apartment complexes because mm-hmm. it was regular people that lived there too. So. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely, dope, dope, dope. So, what's your relationship like with Childish Gambino now? Um, I mean, we're cool. Yeah, still like it's still everything's cool because we know that you were on. Well, back correct me if I'm wrong, but you were doing background vocals on this latest album. Mm-hmm. I want to sound the song Zombies. Mm-hmm. So, how was it for you to be a part of something so big? Um, I mean, it's tight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. All right, cool. I mean, it's like, I mean, the shit won a Grammy. Yeah. You know, like, it's tight. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> that's what's up. So, you just recently released a project, mm-hmm. Cry for Help. Um, So, are you okay? Like, as a human being, are you? <laughs> nah, nah, seriously, because, like, I feel like you released and you talked about a lot of things that I wouldn't have expected from you as an artist. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm great now. Now. Yeah. So, what's going on with you? What happened? Um, I mean, life. Life just be happening, um, you know. When you're an entrepreneur, and you and you have to take care of yourself, mm-hmm. like 
there is no you can't just punch in and wait for a check every two weeks type thing it's like you have to always be on go right. to like create opportunities for yourself and so for me like things were just moving really slow at a point in time mm. where i was just and i felt like i didn't have anybody around to like say these things to or anybody that wanted to listen mm. so i was just like fuck it i'm gonna just make this music and just say all the things that i'm feeling right now and it was honestly the the like this project i fuck with this more than anything else i've ever made okay. even though i love everything i made but like there's something about this that's just like i don't know it's just me like this is a side of me that i don't show people you know mm. what i mean people get the happy go lucky like uh, uh, uh. Mm. but sometimes i'll be like bro leave me alone <laughs> like don't talk to me like so um yeah i just wanted to put that out there just to get it off my chest so now i'm like all right i'm cool I'm mm. good. Okay. So the song Latch Key, that's something that you really experienced? Like mm -hmm. you were talking about, like from your perspective? Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. So how did you put yourself in a position to really reveal so much on that song? I don't want to give it away for the people who haven't heard it. If you haven't heard Latch Key, go check it out right now. But how were you able to really put yourself in a position to talk about that? Um, I mean, I don't, I mean, for me, it was just like I was writing. I wasn't, that wasn't even like a song at first. It wasn't like something like, oh, I'm going to write a song about this. I was just writing. And I wanted to be as I want. I was practicing like honesty and vulnerability okay. through writing, and so um, I was like, "Can I make something that I've been through in my life like rhyme, like make it into a rhyme scheme?" And so I just started writing, 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 and that whole song was just like thirty-two bars or whatever. And so one day I was with this producer named Josh Crocker, and he played that instrumental, and I was like, "Hmm, like this feels really like sad and dark." Hmm. I wonder if I said this over this, how would it feel? And then I said it and I was like, mm. hmm. I was like, should I put this out in the world? <laughs> hmm. And I was like, fuck it. Just do it. Because this is something that like had been bothering me for however many years. And I mean, still to this day, it's still, it's still kind of like, it's a little triggering or whatever, but mm -hmm. I just felt like I wanted to just get that off my chest. And I, and like, it's a very common thing amongst like women that we don't talk about at all you know like i know so many women that have been through that and it's just like i wanted to just let them know that like hey you're not alone you know like even if you feel it you're not alone absolutely well you did a very good job getting your message across because listening to it i was just like is she talking about her is she talking about one of her friends no, like no it was me okay I mean, that's life. It should be happening, like I said. Absolutely. Shit do be happening. <laughs> you know, happening. I feel like, hey, this this interview is a perfect example of shit be happening. But, mm -hmm. you know, everything works out the way it's supposed to. So, um, in closing, because, you know, you have an amazing show that you're about to do. Looking forward to seeing you perform live. What are some advice that you can give to any up-and-coming artist that's just on the grind? I live in some head-ass, never heard of this place before, town, city, state, and I want to make it out. Carrie did it. I want to be like her. What's some advice um, you can provide? First, get out of your own way. Because mm. um, we can all get in our own way no matter how big of a city we live in. Right. Um, and travel. Go. Like, go. Just go somewhere. <laughs> Anywhere. You know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. go somewhere. Because um, for me, that was, that was the major factor in me being able to make the connections and meet the people that I needed to meet was just me just... Being down to just take a risk and go out of town, mm. you know, like work. I was working jobs for like two weeks, get my paycheck and like I'm quit. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> That's tight. And then go to South by. That's tight. When South by was like that the thing, you know, yeah. what I mean, I would go down to South by, and then do a showcase, you know, and then I would meet somebody and be like, yo, I heard that song before. Da -da. You know, mm. it's just it's just putting yourself in positions for like, um, fate to kind of happen, you know, so. That's real. That's real. That's real. That's real. Well, I want to tell you, congratulations to you on all your success. Thank you. Been rocking with you for a while as a DJ. It feels good to play your music. People Thank really you. do vibe with you, especially Supplier. That's my favorite song about you. Thank Supplier you. I'm so glad you said that because everybody goes straight to No Small Talk. And I'm like, y'all, I got I got some bops. Like, mm. stop playing with me. Supplier is the vibe. Yeah. Like, so I played <laughs> it at plenty of parties. And it, what is that? Oh, my God. No, Supplier goes yeah. crazy. I love this song. Absolutely. So thank you. I appreciate no, it. I appreciate you for your time. We are definitely looking forward to seeing you kill the stage tonight. Um, Instagram, Twitter, plug yourself right now for anybody who's not hip to carry folk. Um, Instagram, Twitter. Carrie Faux, K-A-R-I-F-A-U-X. 
And then you can just Google me. Yeah. K A R I space mm-hmm. F A U X. And it's Carrie Foe, not Kari Fox <laughs> <laughs> or anything else. <laughs> but yeah, um, just hit me up on any of my socials. Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. I'm Miranda Man 20 Infinity. iHeartRadio. We out. Bye. 20 Infinity.